Okay, so the very next item that we learned how to basically do or what to do on our basic maps was how to use the multimeter. So you just come over here, left click on the multimeter, make sure you hook it up just like a regular one, you know, negative, negative, positive, positive. You can go backwards with it, but it's just going to read a negative value. If it was an old analog one, you would have blown it to smithereens. But, uh, so needless to say, you know, if I just wanted to measure, you know, how many volts is going across, obviously it's going to be, let's put another resistor in here so we can get it, what we call variance. So to delight, delete the line, just highlight the line, delete it, you know, nothing fancy there. Put another resistor in, another 1.2K, that's fine. Nothing, basically a, what we'll call a simple voltage divider, you know, nothing high tech to it. And we want to see exactly how many volts is in the middle of between this 1.2, you know, bridge in a sense or split between the power supply. And in theory, we should have exactly six volts. So you hit play. Once you got your item, your multimeter hooked up, hit play, and then you just double click on it to bring it up. And of course, we're in volts, DC. Keep in mind how to use a multimeter. You know, just like the, I have people use multimeters in here before I'd have them use them in real life, just to prevent a lot of multimeters from getting blown up, popping fuses and stuff of that nature. But you know how people are. Uh, amps, volts, ohms, and, and decibels. Six volts, real simple. You know, if you're going to be troubleshooting a resistor pack, you're, you know, this is what you're going to be doing. Most of them will have usually three, four, five resistors on them, depending on what they are, especially when it comes to automotive. Um, but that's basically how you use what we call a DC setting on a multimeter inside multi-sim to get a voltage reading. You know, so I would consider this what we'll call mid voltage, because generally what you're going to run into before you play with transistors is voltage dividers. Voltage dividers, current are just some of the basics. Now I'm assuming that most people understand what current and voltage are and have gone through their basic electronics classes and stuff of that nature. If you have any questions on electronics, I do answer them. Just don't be too facetious with your questions. Um, but other than that, you know, I can educate you on pretty much anything you want to know when it comes to the electronics world, especially when it comes to RC time constants, caps, you know, power law, uh, Ohm's law, the whole the whole bit, and how to read how to read resistors. You know, nowadays most of them have numbers on them, so. <laughs> they don't, they're not color coded like the old days but there's you basically a, a way of how to basically put your, your basic multimeter in on an electronic circuit just a simple you know resistor circuit you know voltage divider circuit we generally do this uh, you're going to be using DC settings to chan you know test where you're going to be biasing your transistors at or whatever components but uh, a lot of this stuff goes into the digital electronic spectrum because once you understand the analog, you can play with the digital vice versa. I would have to say going in analog to digital would be the preferred path because then you can you can learn to appreciate electronics in the analog level then you know and having things moved up into the digital. And of course, you can always move your cursor over to the right hand side, put it over each one, and I can go through each one of these and show you how to use them. Uh, we use the uh, distortion analyzer to analyze a lot of the circuits uh, that, you know, if you're looking at an op-amp circuit and you, you're like, there's something wrong here, what can I change to make it better, whatever, you know, that definitely helps the distortion analyzer, basically helps you design the circuit to where you're not putting out distortion, you know, to me, bar none, just absolutely beautiful. Like I said, the tools that they provide are just absolutely off the chart. Um, like I said, I've been using multi-sim for many years. Well, some of the basics most people don't understand and, not, you know, clue out. Um, if you ever want to close it out, just hit the close. You can just double click on it to bring it up again. So just be aware of that. You know, double click left, left double clicks, voltage dividers, and a, you know, DC power source. You know, AC is different. You know, obviously you have to handle the AC circuitry differently than you do DC, you know, especially when it comes to power supplies and filtration and stuff like that. Um, to me, it helps design it virtually before you do it in the real world. That way you don't make, you know, you don't muck something up or, you know, you've got everything designed right the first time. Uh, I generally find that when I design something in multi-sim or the design software of choice, Arduino, or whatever, and then test it first, generally I have a higher success rate in getting the actual device itself to work when you're actually, you know, in the real world doing the real stuff. Uh, you have, you know, just increases your chances of, you know, percentage of on success extremely higher. So needless to say... There's your basic, you know, multimeter between, you know, on a simple, you know, voltage divider, 12 volts. You're going to run into it a lot when it comes to the automotive industry. 
um, or just in regular, you know, amplifiers and just, you know, mediocre household electronics that plug into the wall. You know, they have the switch mode power supply. They generally rectify down to 12 or 5 volts or 3 volts, 3-3. Three, three. So there's your basics of a multimeter and multi-SIM 14. Have a good day.